What's up, Julius Cube audience? Um, today I'm going to showcase how to create a very interesting function. That function being a function that's differentiable everywhere, but with the derivative that it's not continuous at any rational number. All right, so to answer this question, first we're going to have to understand what like the words differentiable mean and also discontinuous. So the derivative is, it's, if we have some function here, let's call this, this function f, then the derivative of a function at some point here would be the slope of this tangent line, the line that's tangent to the function at that point. So the slope of the tangent line would be the derivative. The way we rigorously define this, because obviously, uh, there has to be a way to more rigorously define it is um, by using a limit. This is the definition of a derivative. And if this limit converges for some value a in this situation, then we say that f is differentiable at that value a. So this is what differentiable means. Now, next thing we're going to have to define is continuity. Now, continuity at first, it seems pretty simple because, I mean, intuitively, we all know what the word continuity means or continuous. It's that it's one continuous line. It's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, it's much harder to rigorously define what it means. The way most people, uh, or well, the way that mathematicians do it is by saying if we have a function, it's continuous at A if the value at A of a function is equal to the limit as x approaches a of the function. All right, so now let's look at in what ways something can be discontinuous. So there are three like main ways for that to happen. One of them is like this here, where um, one value is different from all the surrounding values. So the limit does not approach that value, it approaches a different value. Another here is where there's a discontinuous leap. So one side of the limit approaches a different value uh, than the other, so the limit does not exist. Another is where there are infinite oscillations, so the limit also does not exist. If we go back to our original question, um, at each rational number, one of these has to be true. And the one that makes the most sense for this to happen um, is this one right here with the infinite oscillations. All right, so now let's look at the actual question in mind. So let's take a look at this third case of the infinite oscillations. So if we have a function f prime or f and the, its derivative is discontinuous at a zero, then this is gonna be true. So since we're just creating a function whose derivative is this continuous at zero? Um, we can just take a look at any function that has these infinite oscillations. Uh, for example, sine of one over x. Now this is going to be um, is going to have a property like this, but it's not going to be defined at zero. So let's take something like this. It's zero when x is zero. It's sine of one over x when x is not equal. Now this is not going to be continuous since the function itself is not going to be continuous anyway, because the limit as it goes to zero is the any. So we want the derivative to be something like this. And I can actually um, make a function that has a derivative that is similar to this, and it's pretty simple. All you have to do is you just take this, what we have here, and multiply the sine of one over x by x squared. Now here, this function is gonna be continuous obviously because x squared sine of one over x, um, that's, gonna be, that's gonna be approaching zero um, as x approaches zero by the squeeze theorem. And this is the only point where it could be discontinuous. Uh, if we look at the derivative, we can see that the derivative at any value other than zero is just gonna be two x 
sine of 1 over x minus cosine of 1 over x when x is not equal to 0. And for the value when x does equal to 0, we can use this definition of the derivative to find that. And that would be the limit as x goes to 0 of f of 0 uh, minus f of x over 0 minus x. Now, this is just going to be equal to limit as x goes to 0 of um, x squared sine 1 over x over x, which you can see this is the x's cancel. We have x times sine of 1 over x. You can see that's just going to be 0. So at 0, the derivative is going to be 0. And um, we can see that the derivative here is discontinuous when x goes to 0 because we have this term right here. If we try to use this definition of continuity over here uh, to uh, find if the function is continuous, then we run into an issue. Um, that being this cosine term, because this is going to be the any, and this other term is going to be, uh, this other term is going to be zero by the squeeze theorem. So this whole um, limit is going to be the any. So we have a function whose derivative is discontinuous at one value, but it is defined everywhere, including at that value. Now let's see where we can go from this function. Now let's say we have f of x and we add to it f of x plus one. Now this one, this function is gonna have a derivative that's discontinuous uh, at x equals zero. And this one is going to have a derivative that's discontinuous at x equals negative one. So, their sum is going to have a derivative that is discontinuous at both x equals zero and negative one. We can use this property of adding together the discontinuities of the derivatives uh, to our advantage when uh, looking, when creating this original function by just creating a function that is the sum of a bunch of different functions or a bunch of different uh, versions of this function each discontinuous at different numbers. Uh, the problem with that is that that's going to be a lot of things to sum together, considering that there are a lot of rational numbers, or infinitely many, in fact. So we can make that a bit easier by substituting in another value for x. So if we take f of sine of x, you can see that um, whenever sine of x is equal to zero, then um, that implies that the derivative is discontinuous at that x value where sine of x equals zero. And that happens to be at any multiple of pi. So if you take f of sine of pi x, and this is gonna be discontinuous at every integer because sine of pi x uh, is zero at every integer. Now we can make this even better by adding together a bunch of different, um, I guess, scaled versions of this f of sine of pi x. Uh, like we can add to it f of sine of two pi x and f of sine three pi x. And this whole thing this whole sum is going to be discontinuous at every uh, integer and also multiple of one half and also multiple of one third because uh, what these this two and the, this t the three is th uh, doing here is it's scaling it's like squeezing it down making it smaller now we can potentially add together infinitely many of these including an f of sine of four pi x and so on but this would be divergent as we're adding together infinitely many things. So what we want to do is we want to scale each of these things down by some value so that the whole sum converges. An easy way to do that is by scaling each uh, function down by a power of two. And the power of two is increasing, guys. The power of two go down really fast. 
So this would definitely be convergent. So now we have this sum. Now this function, this, this big sum is a function that's differentiable everywhere, but has a derivative that's discontinuous at all uh, rational numbers. So we have answered the question and I'm going to show the function on the screen right now. Uh, and here's its derivative. Anyway, so using definitions of continuity and the definition of derivative, um, we have created a function uh, whose derivative is discontinuous at all rational numbers, but still differentiable everywhere. And that's about it.